Ladies and gentlemen, did I just hear a white female SABC presenter by the name of Leanne sit there in an interview and say to a black Zimbabwean brother, Rutendo, that why is it that he does not go back to Zimbabwe? Ha, is your color match? Yo, 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 yo. Why are you here? Because I'm part of the problem in Zimbabwe. My attitude of thinking that I had to come and take up the opportunity that was offered to me here so why don't you go instead home? of mining me. May I ask you that? Why I, you I am going home? home. But are right you? now I've also got family in South Africa. I've got South African children. And those South African children don't just allow me to just stand up and leave. But I do have projects that I'm taking a part in in Zimbabwe because I've learned that those resources are the most important thing. If you have such faith in your country, in Zimbabwe, I would say and I would think you would get up and you would take your family and you would go and fix up. The this is how confident white people are now in our country to such an extent that they have forgotten that they themselves are the settlers. They can ask another African brother what he's doing in South Africa. Why doesn't he go back home? This is their mentality. Pure racism live on television. Let's speak about this interview. You. Welcome to King Said So, Africa's one land, one language, one currency, one army on King Said So. Africans can unite your Pan-Africanist podcast. Enjoy. Peace in Pan-Africanism to all my African brothers and sisters. Welcome back to King Said So. I am your host, and we back at it again with another one and this time around um, I'm doing an interview that uh, I got very late because I don't have TV I don't have a TV um, so news get to me very late unless one of my subscribers excuse me unless one of my subscribers tells me that King did you say did you see this or someone sends me a link or some way um, about three four years ago I decided I want to unplug myself from mainstream media and that was before I had the YouTube channel the YouTube channel is one year um, one year a few months one year two months or something like that now so um, when I started the YouTube channel I did not know that I would go the direction of politics and now if you are reporting on politics you need to be constantly um, updated on what is happening and TV is one of the main things that feed us. So for me, it's, if it's not on YouTube, usually it does not reach me. Um, with that being said, for me, this interview of Lien is very disturbing. As a Pan-Africanist, I'm sure you can imagine that um, I don't I don't I don't take it kindly what Lien has said. Clearly, she had a, an agenda from the beginning. Her attitude towards uh, Rotendo was wrong. I've seen many other YouTubers make a video about this. I saw my brother Penwell make a video. I saw another brother, um, Thomas Mabaso, make a video. I saw, I saw some few YouTubers do this and um, all of them leaning to what this white person has said. And of course, as a Pan-Africanist, it's not our job to fight any um, uh, op opposing views, but it is, we are here to put our, our views clear and put our side of the story. Respect what other people are saying, uh, but don't make a mistake of not saying what you want to say. So the interview is not about who must leave South Africa and who must stay. The interview was about the legacy of uh, Robert Mugabe, one of the greatest presidents in, in Africa. If you ask me, yes, we can agree um, that his legacy was tarnished by sanctions and towards the end by him holding on uh, a, a longer than he should have to that seat of presidency. Let's listen to the, the introduction first. How Rotendo explains this thing of the legacy of um, the former president 
Robert Mugabe. Now I've got Rutendo Matenyane, who is an activist for Zimbabwean Unite Against uh, U.S. War Sanctions now, correct? Got that. Thank you very much for joining us and welcome to Morning Live. Thank you very much, Leanne. So, you know, there have been very different views about the former and late president Robert Mugabe's legacy. What, what, let's get your starting point first. What do you think his legacy is? Well, first of all, I'd like to say that what is... What has been problematic is that the legacy that we have seen assessed by people hasn't been his legacy, but it has been about trying to seek faults in what it is that he stood for. Um, but otherwise, Robert Mugabe was a humanitarian who stood for making sure that black people get emancipation. Emancipation that allows them to also have property rights and be able to ascend to being seen as humans who can self-determine without having to be uh, mastered by anybody else or to be looked after by other races. Mm -hmm. And I think mm -hmm. that's what Mugabe stood for. He was also mm -hmm. a liberator and a man that made sure that he emancipated black people by ensuring that he gave them the best education, access to their resources, control to their resources, and also a pan-Africanist who made sure that he defended Africa from imperialism. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, I love what Rutendo is saying. I love... Uh, and respect Rutendo for his views on Africa or pan-Africanism. -Af I respect his views on how Africans should work together. I understand what he's saying when he says South Africa helps Zimbabwe for Zimbabwe to be great and so that you could benefit also. I understand what he's saying when he says South Africa, when you were in trouble, Zimbabwe was there for you. I understand everything that Rutendo is saying. And I understand the fact that no president in Africa or no president in the world can really uh, survive with strict sanctions that Zimbabwe wa was imposed on, was imposed, that, that were imposed on Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe's reason for them to fail was the sanctions. You like it or not, you cannot blame anything else. What are you blaming? Because in the beginning when Robert Mugabe took... Uh, uh, took um, a presidency and took his land, took his minerals back and took everything back. No Zimbabwean person had anything wrong to say about Zim, uh, uh, Mugabe. But because of the sanctions, their businesses could not strive. The, the, the people could not do as they pleased because white people made sure if we are not in charge, then Zimbabwe shall suffer. And many of you coward coconut black people fail to recognize that fact. That white people have got a tendency that if we are not in charge, then if you take charge, we control you from behind. But if you can't control you from behind, we're going to make sure we impose sanctions upon your country so that you can fail, so that your people can hate you. That is what is happening here. You know, so the legacy of, of Robert Mugabe, we must be careful from who are we listening uh, uh, to, uh, from about the legacy of of, of um, Robert Mugabe. Robert Mugabe was a great president. You like it or not. You like it or not. You know, so for me, if white people tell our history, they will tell it into their favor. They will say Zimbabwe was great before Robert Mugabe, even though um, um, the, the racism was there. I mean, the population of white people in Zimbabwe is so so little, but they were ruling the, 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 the mines, they were ruling the agriculture sector, and Zimbabwe was great according to them. Why was it great? Because they were benefiting. You understand what I'm saying, my African people? But in Nina, you are failing to understand these simple facts. You are feeling that these people don't see you as people that can handle your own economy. And many of you actually don't see yourself as people that can handle your own economy. If a white person is not next to you, if a white person is not in your mix, in your party, in your whatever, you guys don't see yourself worthy or competent enough to do whatever that you must do. I'm telling you the truth. I'm telling you the truth. And you can hear that from what Lien is saying. Because from the very first beginning, like I said, of the interview, her attitude was not right towards uh, Rotendo. And she then, the follow-up question tells you that her, she shows us which direction actually she wanted to go. Especially waiting for Lem Pimpile that was coming later in the, into the interview. So, you know, everything that you're saying 
some people may agree with that, but a lot of people may disagree with it, and I'm sure you, you're widely aware of that. A lot of what you speak about the former President Mugabe is, is very much so what he stood for years ago, and that was what people were attracted to him about, and what he really, really uplifted the country and, and promised a lot. But when you look, after all of the years in Parliament, and you look what's been left behind, many say that there, there truly is a humanitarian crisis happening in Zimbabwe, and this was just such a, a, a bad legacy to leave behind. What do you say to critics? I say to critics who say that they might as well say the same about Churchill. They might as well say the same about um, Charles de Gaulle for what happened to France during the uh, German invasion because what we have in Zimbabwe is a country that is under war. It has been attacked by U.S. war sanctions. 16 million people are being collectively punished because of the successes of what Mugabe achieved because we live in an anti-black world that believes that black people do not deserve access and control of their own resources and Mugabe was punished for that together with the Zimbabwean people. But when I look at the metrics of what it is that Mugabe achieved, the fact that the Americans decided to call Mugabe and Zimbabwe a, um, a, 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 an unequivocal threat against the United States' interests because of giving black people access and control of their resources tells me that Mugabe was not really a failure, but what is happening in Zimbabwe is the country is at war, and that's what's causing the problems that yeah. we see. Now, because Rutendo has painted Robert Mugabe into this big, uh, beautiful picture and still acknowledging that, listen, the man made mistakes when he was um, uh, towards the, the, the end of his term. Lien does not want it. Lien will say um, what, that's what he stood for years ago. You know, that's what he stood for years ago. But uh, at the end, he left a bad legacy, you know. Um, look at what has been left behind. You know, that's, that's the type of the terminology she, she's using. You know, uh, so Mugabe, guys, was punished for allowing black people to have access to minerals. That's the main thing. That's the only thing. And when I say minerals, I'm talking about what is underneath on, on the ground and what is the land itself. You know, I, I don't understand how, how people does not understand that. You know, and now I'm starting to understand why Jacob Zuma is refighting again at the age of 82 years old, fighting to be president one more time. It's because of his legacy. It's because you guys, when Jacob Zuma died today, some of you will celebrate him, but most of you will tend to say Jacob Zuma had the nine wasted years. That is the narrative that you guys are pushing. That is the narrative that mainstream media is pushing. Nine wasted years, nine wasted years, nine wasted years. And you repeat the lie many times. At the absence of the truth, the lie becomes the truth. <laughs> Type I agree on the comment session. I, I now understand why Jacob Zuma is fighting. I understand. This makes it clear to me. That white people want to destroy the legacy of Jacob Zuma. Even after Robert Mugabe has died, they're still tarnishing his legacy, still throwing mud on his name. You know, the man did great for Zimbabwe. Under the circumstances that he was ruling that country in. Was he perfect? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. So one thing is, of course, the sanctions were removed about two months ago. Um, one thing for sure, when the economy of Zimbabwe starts picking up, start picking up, the black people of Zimbabwe has land. So they have what? A fighting chance. You know, Lee Ann continues to attack the Zimbabwean people and says, people are hungry, are starving. Yo, Lee Ann, Lee Ann. This is the type of thing, uh, uh, type of racism that ACBC uh, condones. A white lady attacking uh, a, a black uh, African like this. We get into the uh, to the to the big part that I wanted to touch this video. People are starving in Zimbabwe. People don't have electricity. People don't have water. People are on the streets. They're leaving the country. They feel that there are no opportunities. That the country is falling apart. It's not serving them well. What? What are you talking to? I mean, what, what are you, wh why are we blaming that on, on sanctions against Zimbabwe? I mean, this is not, do you not believe a leadership failure? I don't believe it's a leadership failure. 
I believe that we've also got 50% of all Europeans living outside Europe. We've got 5 million Europeans living in South Africa. And that is also because of the fact that people migrate because they've got skills. And a lot of Zimbabweans that are in South Africa have also been attracted to South Africa and recruited to come to South Africa by companies that need their skills. That is testament to the skilling that uh, Mugabe gave Zimbabweans and the education that he gave. Yes, we do have a crisis that is being caused. Refugees are coming into South Africa. Refugees are going all over the world. But a lot of that has to do with the sanctions that are on Zimbabwe. And what I always never understand is how it is that it can be justified for Germans to leave Germany to go to the United States because of the war that took place in World War II. But Zimbabweans cannot be accepted to leave their country when they're under economic warfare that has been imposed by a superpower like America together with the entire Western world. Yeah. If we... Now remember, ladies and gentlemen, it's important for Leanne um, as a white person to, con to, to stand up for those white people that their land was taken um, from them. Le uh, not their land anyway, but the, where they stayed, their farms. Remember, uh, some of you don't know this fact. When Ernest Munagawa took over, he paid and gave back the land to white people. He paid them reparations. He gave them a starter pack for, for, for what Mugabe did. And he, he gave them the land back. Uh, oh, go and fact check me if you don't know. Zimbabwe gave back the land to white people. And that was uh, Mnangagwa. That's why I will never respect Mnangagwa. For exactly that move. Number two. She says uh, people are starving in Zimbabwe. Um, why are you blaming the sanctions? You know, she, she, she's there to say, let's, let's, let's kick Mugabe while he's, he's down. He's dead. Let's continue to kill his legacy. It's the same thing that they are doing about Gaddafi. It's the same thing that all the heroes, Thomas Sankara, all of them, that's what they are trying to do. To say when they took over, uh, things got worse. You know, because you Africans are, don't have pride over ownership. You don't want ownership. You want inclusivity. You want to be included in the economy. But that economy, you don't become the owners. You become the, 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 the workers, the employees. That's what most of you Africans are doing. Rutendo speaks about, <laughs> there are many Europeans in, in South Africa. Hmm? How many people do we have here? The Dutch, uh, the Belgians, the, the Germans, the Italians, all of these um, rubbish people here in our, in our land. Staying with us, now they even forgot that they are from there. Uh, they think that they are South African. They, are, they think they are Africans because they were born in South Africa. And we need to change our name. We cannot continue to call our country Azania with a geographical location. This is rubbish. When are we going to have a, a president that is brave? Azania is our name. So all of these Germans and all of these people that are here, they don't want to leave South Africa. So if you don't want uh, uh, to leave South Africa, why do you expect Zimbabweans to, to leave South Africa? Huh? Why do you expect Zimbabwe to leave South Africa? You people, you don't want, you settlers, you came here, you settled and you, you cohibited you, uh, yourself into our land. You killed our ancestors, you did everything. Your ancestors killed our ancestors. You are born here, yes, so what? Yes, so what? You are not from here. Yes, you were born here. You are not from here. There is no way I can go to China with my wife, uh, get her pregnant, have children in China, and then call my children Chinese. No way. Even their children, 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 even if they get born in China, they will still be called Africans. That is a fact. You are not Africans. You have the nerve to ask an, another African brother, why doesn't he go back to Zimbabwe? Zimbabwe is in Africa. This is our African brother. We love and protect our African brothers. King, what are you saying? There's crime. There's this. Uh, the... Yes, I understand. I understand that Africa is not where it's supposed to be. Because our borders separate us. We need to... Uh,
we need to unite as Africans so that Africa can benefit every African wherever they are. So that there is no need for anyone to move because of poverty. Let them move because of other reasons. Not because they are seeking better opportunities. Never. You understand? But they will always find one black person who is a sellout, who will come and speak against Robert Mugabe. Listen to this uh, ninkam poop of uh, coconut uh, that came from Zimbabwe uh, to be in this interview. Rubbish. President Robert Mugabe's legacy. Thanks for coming. I'm glad you could make it just in time uh, for you. the interview. Thank so you. let's, we've, we've been having quite an interesting conversation and I've been hearing the, the, the views of, uh, of, of our guest here in studio with us talking to Zimbabwe with our Zimbabwean president, Rutendo Matanyane, who is saying he was a humanitarian, he was a liberator, um, he, he, he was important with education and he was a, a, a non-apologetic leader who's left a great legacy behind. What are your views well, on what this? What great legacy has Mugabe left? Mugabe is a remorseless tyrant. He destroyed the country. Why is Rutendo here? Why am I here? We are here because our country has nothing to offer us. Why are millions of Zimbabweans here? I just heard him say, uh, why are Europeans uh, in wherever they are? I, I, I missed what he said. We are here because not out of choice but because of circumstances. We have to make a living. We can make a living in our own country. Mm -hmm. Let's not romanticize bad leadership. Mugabe is an eloquent example of how not to run a country, a textbook example of how not to do things. He destroyed a country. And uh, I find it uh, a huge shame that there are people who see a hero in Mugabe, a liberator who use all these phrases that my brother is using to describe a man who, in simple terms, was a very bad leader, mm. destroyed a country that in 1980 held so much promise. Yeah. If you, if you look at the turnout of his funeral, though, and you look at the send-off for the former president... The turnout was very poor. Was it poor? Th because it was, looked like he got it was an empty, there was, well. No, no, no. There were several heads of state, okay, heads of state attended. But the National Sports Stadium was virtually empty. Mm -hmm. You can see it from your visuals. Yeah. Well, what do you see? Well done, SABC. Well done, African people. Well done, SABC, for kicking down the legacy of Robert Mugabe. Well done, man. You did a great job. You made your colonizers very happy. And most of your coconuts very happy. They are happy now. You brought in someone that said, no, Mugabe, since the beginning of Mugabe's term as a president, things have been terrible. That is not true. That is not a fact. You know? And again, I will repeat, I, I'm not saying Mugabe was not per uh, perfect. Show me a, a president in Africa who is perfect. Well, that, that will be Ibrahim Torre. But show me a president. Uh, you know, you can't say Mandela was perfect. If you say Mandela was perfect, he was perfect for who? For white people. Did not bother white people. You can't say Tabumbeki was perfect because the economy was growing. For who? For white people. Black people were never included in the, uh, never participated in the, in the growth of, of our country. You go to the JSE and look at the companies that are listed there. Show me black companies there. Show me. It's a black country. Show me black companies there. You know? Go on the stock exchange and show me there. Show me which black comp companies are thriving and doing great. You know, they will always bring one of us who disagrees with King to come and tell you guys pan-Africanism does not work. Uh, you know, they are coming for all of us. They are coming. For me, they have come for me, but, you know, <laughs> they thought I don't have lawyers. They thought I was just another thing here in the street who knows nothing. Thing in those I was blocked fast, fast, you know, and it, it, it brings my heart bleeds because of that. Because I don't have the energy to fight another African person, I don't have that energy. I don't. I want to see my African people happy, 
I want to see Africa united. I want to see uh, us as South Africans building our country. I want to see Zimbabwean building their country. I want to see Zimbabwean helping South Africa to build this country. I want to see Zimb uh, South Africa helping Botswana to build this country. Just like Lesotho is assisting us, giving us water. Uh, Gauteng, 70% of Gauteng's water comes from Lesotho. Things like that make me proud to be an African. If Lesotho said, no, we don't want to help you South Africans, then what? You know? We were speaking about this divide and conquer. Now you have people that... <sighs> okay. But anyway, what I wanted to say in this video is this next clip where a fight breaks out between uh, this racist Lien. She could not contain herself anymore. Uh, the fight broke out and she attacked El, uh, Rutendo and said, why don't you go back? Why don't you take your children and go back? Imagine! Rutendo tells the... Whoa, whoa, whoa. Ladies and gentlemen... I'm a punu anesi bindi. Anesi bindi. What do you say? I mean, are you living in, in South Africa, Rotendo? Let's ask you that question. Do you live yes, here? Yes, I do live in South Africa. And I think it's very important for Basilton to be able to take his context and not use that self-reference to think that that's my situation. I was offered an opportunity to come to South Africa in 1999 by a South African company that offered me a work permit while I was in Zimbabwe. I was working as a manager in a company and I came to South Africa because of the opportunity it offered me in the marketing space. So I did not leave Zimbabwe because of, of, because of the fact that Zimbabwe was not good. Good number for two, you, but a lot of millions that are here. Number two, there are a lot of people that are in South Africa that have run away from land to come waiters in South Africa. They've run away from mining gold platinum, diamonds, and resources to come to South Africa because they would rather prefer to be given a job by somebody else to use their CV rather than to take over the land, take the resources, and use those resources to become rich the way that it has made the Rhodesians why, why don't they? I mean, if that's, if that's what you're saying, they're running away from those wonderful opportunities. Why don't they take up the opportunity? In fact, why don't you take up the opportunity? Why, why would you come and make your fortune here in South Africa when, as you've described it, you could be making a fortune in Zimbabwe? Why are you here? Because I'm part of the problem in Zimbabwe. My attitude of thinking that I had to come and take up the opportunity that was offered to me here so why don't you go instead home? of mining May land. I ask you that? Why I, are you not I am going home. going home. But are right you? now, I've also got family in South Africa. I've got South African children. And those South African children don't just allow me to just stand up and leave, but I do have projects that I'm taking part in in Zimbabwe because I've learned that those resources are the most important thing. If you have such faith in your country, in Zimbabwe, I would say and I would think you would get up and you would take your family and you would go and fix up the future of Zimbabwe. If you're saying there's land, if you're saying there's minerals, if you're saying there is so much wealth and opportunities for you there, you're living a contradiction. No, I'm not living a contradiction. You, you certainly are by sitting I, I, here. You're living a contradiction. I would ask you that why... Because people are suffering in Zimbabwe. So why are people, not, why are people not going to the Netherlands? Why are people not, Germans not going back to Germany? Is it because their countries are bad? Is it because they're running away from problems in the UK or in the, in the States? Why aren't Europeans going? What are you doing here? I live here. This is my home. I'm not running away but from why, it. But uh, why are you living here instead There's of Europe? Why did your great-grandparents come here country. instead of Europe? Uh, we're not talking about grandparents. We're talking about me. No, we're talking about you've you. made it sound like a Zimbabwean needs to go back to Zimbabwe no, no, to no, show no, that no. Zimbabwe is working. We, so why are Europeans not going context, back to Europe? Why are Asians not going back to Asia? Why are they the staying in South Africa? The context of the conversation yes. is that you're saying that Zimbabwe is a beautiful country with great opportunities and people have run away from there to become waiters. The context is you are living here in South Africa when you could be going back and making that country work. That's the, that's but the context. You also forgot but that, I, you also forgot that I was asked to come here. Somebody thought my skills were important here. I've been asked and I was to go to other countries, but I believe in this but country. Yes, I yes, but why don't you believe in Europe? No, I believe in but South Africa. Why don't you believe in Europe? I believe in my country. Why don't you so believe is, in Europe? This is, is not it, about me and you. This is, is about Zimbabwe. But you, but you, your question has to apply to you as well. Though. As a presenter, Lien got a zero out of ten. Got emotional. Started attacking our brother. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to have people that have got different views from us. What, what is the number one rule on the Pan-Africanism page for arguments and all of that against especially our African brothers? That we, we argue uh, in the hopes of converting on, or convincing you otherwise, but not um, with the aim to kill. What Lien was trying to do is to kill the dignity of our brother live on TV, television. And I'm happy, and of course, you know, Rutendo, he fights back and he fought back perfect. 
It's just that I wish that I could get a five minutes there. You know, yeah, they just put me in at the end. They say, King, come and close this uh, uh, argument that we are having here. Because he, uh, Rutendo being a Zimbabwean, there's other things that he cannot say. Understand? He cannot... Um, for me, I was going to uh, I was going to tell Lian to her face that we are tired of you white people in our country. The way you the way you are tired of Zimbabweans in our country, we want you out. Because most of you still carry the racism in your blood. You don't want to share the land. You don't want to share the economy. You want us to continue to live like slaves in our in our country. And you want us to be afraid to voice out that frustration because you will impose sanctions upon us. Because white people are, are united. Even if these white people are born in South Africa, they are not looked at South Africans. Take their land and see what the U.S. is going to do. Take their land and see what Europe is going to do. You're going to see that they are actually European. Europe is going to stand. You're going to see Australia is not going to trade with South Africa anymore. You're going to see that uh, New Zealand is not going to trade with South Africa. They're going to stand in unity with their white people. Because these are not Africans. They are not Africans. Where does she get the nerve? After return to tells her, listen, I'm here working here. God employed here and everything. Um, because we say um, Zimbabweans must come here legally. Well, he is here legally. He's working here. He's working here. He's got, now, what he's got? South African children here. But Leanne does not even care about the children. She says, why don't you take your family and, and pack up and go with your children back to Zimbabwe to go and build Zimbabwe? Why don't, why don't these Europeans do, uh, uh, apply the same logic to themselves? Why don't they apply the same logic to themselves? And most of you black coconuts think the same. This is where your thinking comes from. This is why you hate upon your African brothers because they've installed, they've injected you guys with this, with this filth of hate against your African brothers and sisters. We can solve the African issues, the African problems of, 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 of our, our poor African countries next to each other. We can solve it, but we must unite first. We must unite first. South Africa is in a position to help Zimbabwe with Botswana. With Mozambique, we can help Zimbabwe because Zimbabwe, the, the, the help they need is funding to kickstart a multi-billionaire uh, economy of mining. The minerals they do have, I believe they have got more minerals than South Africa. <clears throat> you understand what I'm saying? Their problem is the economy. But because we don't have the balls to stand up, for someone when they beat up our neighbor with sanctions, we, we, we keep quiet. Then we are, we are shocked when our neighbor's children jump the fence and pick fruits from our trees. We are shocked. Ubuntu is no longer there. We are allowing Abu Lien to, to speak as they please on live television. You know? Up. I'm seeing you guys praising this woman. I'm asking myself, when are Africans going to wake up? When are Africans going to listen and hear between the lines and hear the racism that this woman has? But because I'm a Zimbabwean, a low-class citizens, everyone can attack Zimbabweans. Gate and Mackenzie, Kawawa, Kumkul can go and attack Zimbabweans. Everyone, Zimbabwean is a soft target because nobody will stand up for Zimbabweans. Not under my watch. I will not keep quiet when another African person is attacked by an African or by these European settlers. I will not keep quiet. I will voice out my opinion and I will say what is on my mind. And God forbid I am there in your presence. Because there you're going to feel my presence also. How dare you as a white person tell a, an African person to go back home. How dare you? Where do you take that much? Ustatap is being the singer. Ustatap is being the singer. When I when I came was a well high. While it's a park in well go 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 go
And Rotendo cannot speak like this. Why? Because he's not South African. He's African. He was supposed to speak it because some of you were going to crucify him and protect Lien, just like you are doing right now. You get me fired up. Is this issue of white people discriminating against our African brothers and turning us against them also and the land issue. Those two issues, yo, they drive me crazy. They drive me crazy. So yes, um, that was my take. I'm sorry for uh, temperature going up but you know somebody has to say something somebody just has to say something i'm sending the t-shirts i'm busy sending the t-shirts um northwest you're getting your t-shirts and um, pumalanga your t-shirts should be uh, uh, some of you got the t-shirts but um um they're on their way you know you know these people how they are you choose a three three to five day package and then they think it takes one week or two weeks, more than one week, and it, I don't understand it. But anyway, uh, my apologies for that. Everyone is going to get the T-shirt. Who's supposed to get a T-shirt? I think four of you already um, got the T-shirt. I mean, uh, one got the T-shirt and three are on their way. They should be there by today or tomorrow. And um, um, some of you, the other... The other six, you'll be getting your T-shirt. I'll, um, I'll be buying and printing them and getting uh, to send them to your uh, your direction. Listen, if indeed you are enjoying the content of this this um, channel, the King Says So podcast, please click the subscribe button. We're trying, we're trying to reach that 30,000 subscribers before the election. That, that I'll be very happy to do that. I'll be sending more T-shirts if we get there. Uh, before the elections and I uh, appreciate everyone's uh, support um, you know people are buying the book people are you know sending e-wallets I appreciate your support it makes a difference we don't get much from YouTube we don't get much we, I can't say it's nothing but it's not much to say a person that can leave their job and do this full time mm -mm, mm -mm not even close so thank you so much for everyone guys um your your support means a lot to me let us meet next time um and again feel free to send me news links uh on the comment section those who have my whatsapp those who have my emails uh things like this that you know i would be interested in reporting on or giving a breakdown on please feel free to do it i love um i love this type of topics you know it gives me a chance to re-educate my African people. Until we meet next time, don't forget to pray. After you pray, stand up, African child. Do your best so that God can do the rest. Peace in Pan-Africanism. I salute you. Black Heart, the hustle continua. 100% good quality t-shirts. Made to inspire you. Goals and dreams. T-shirts are now available at an affordable price. Place your order now. 068-473-6908 Instagram at Black7576 Facebook page Black Heart